All right. So like I said, the very first thing we're going to do is do some self-reflection. And in that, maybe. So I would love for you to write down, even if you just had a piece of paper in front of you, write down um, lines one through 24. Just, you know, start writing that down. I'm going to do a little thing over here on the board. So whether or not you do it in a circle or a list format, totally up to you. I like it in the circle, but you can do it either way. And what I want you to do is very first thing is take a marker or a pen and color in however many lines or pi squares um, that you sleep. So how many hours in a day do you sleep? Once you do how many hours you sleep, I want you to now color in um, how many hours, if you're a caregiver of anyone, to, to a family member, to dogs, to, to, to anything. If you're a caregiver, and we'll say you, you eat at the same time. So I'm gonna go up to the board and color in how many hours that you you know, making food, eating food, cleaning up after food. And for me, that also includes when I'm with my children. And I think I'm going to also include in here, um, you know, I'm in sleep, I'm always putting them to bed at the same time. Um, so I might even include the amount of time that I'm with them. So mine all merge together. From there, I want you to fill in how many hours you either work another job or, or the business that you're working. Um, but if you work another job, if you go to school, that's what I'd like to see next. <laughs> no, no more room. Right, exactly. Zoe mm -hmm. was getting next. So. <laughs> Tapped out. <laughs> oh, gee. And then I want you to write down or color in, you know, if you're doing a hobby or if you're on watching TV or if you're doing Facebook or whatever that may look like. Mm 
<laughs> I know I love this. I love this one. And I use this uh, activity even with clients who have been in business for years. Maybe they have three different locations. I just had a gentleman um, talk to me about he he did have three he does have three different locations. And he was saying, I just feel like I'm not getting anything done. Like I need to hire someone, but the finances aren't there. Like what is going on? How, how can this all be? And so we went through this and he realized that he's actually kind of piecing in when he's working on work. So he feels like he's working it all, mm-hmm. on it all the time, but it's really like, well, I had to go run the kids here, especially in the summertime mm-hmm. when they're all going to camps or something like really you're fitting work in rather than fitting your other priorities in. And I'm not here to say which one is right, but I will say that the business won't succeed and you won't feel like you're making headway in the program or in your business if you aren't prioritizing it. So if, if like for him, we had to have that discussion on maybe now is not the right time in your life to have this. Because if I look at mine up here, you can kind of see all 24 hours are taken. So if I were to start a business I would have to determine where that's coming from. Is it going to be, um, could I do something on my lunch break? Uh, could I, you know, while I am cooking and doing my chores around the house and being with my kids, am I going to take it out of that time? Am I going to take it out of my sleep? So this is a question that only you guys can answer. Um, so I would love to hear from both of you as to where um, you're getting the hours and if you, how many hours you do have open. I personally, I have a very open schedule. Hey, that's great. Uh, I don't have kids. I have a dog. I have insomnia, so sleep is really rare. Um, yeah, I'm pretty open. I my I only um, I don't have a job right now. I only have my business, and that is open Thursday through Sunday. So Ooh. okay, so, yeah, that is good. Great. Yeah, my schedule is very much open. Okay, this is good. How about you, Antoine? Oh, so I work um, uh, every day. I work about 10 hours a day. Um, I'm pretty much an insomniac myself, so I try to lay down between four and six hours a day, a night. Um, uh, After doing your chart, I came up with about two or three hours left over in a day, um, given three hours to food and all those different things, and um, maybe another three hours to, I don't know, TV, internet, or whatever the case may be. Um, so, uh, fortunate, um, I'm off every other Friday, so I have that whole day and and again, I'm, my mom would be working for me, taking up some of the, um, as my office manager. So I, that was kind of the plan and hopes that she'll be able to help uh, me move um, in the direct, right direction with the business, with the lack of, with the things that I don't have to, time to do myself. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So there's a plan right there. So your pie just went from your 24 hours to either, you know, it could be 48 hours because your mom is not going to be in it with you. Or even if you thought it doesn't go to a full 24 or 48 hours, maybe it goes to 36 hours because she's, she has additional time for you to use. So that's great. So Rachel has time out of her schedule and you are adding time by adding a person exactly what we want to see. All right. 
from here, now that we know kind of what our day can look like um, for both of you, you're also going to want to say what we need to get done in a day. So um, like Rachel, for you, putting on a calendar every day what tasks you need to do. Um, if I were to show you my calendar, you'd be able to see that I actually put in time for me to work on things when I'm not with clients because I didn't used to do that and I would do it all at home and then that's burnout central. Yeah. So working in that time frame when you're not client facing, you need that. And you might even have to, depending on how both of you work or even how your mom works, it might be beneficial to state instead of just one chunk of four hours that I can get some things done, it might actually look like one of these is a power hour on, I'm going to do emails in that four hour chunk. And then the next one is I'm going to check up on my finances for two hours, make sure that I'm reviewing my profit and loss statement once a week. And, um, you know, just kind of like a CEO day that we have this. And then another hour might be marketing or sales. So I'm going to actually schedule that in to my day to make sure that I'm growing. <laughs> Keep us over here dropping all the markers. But well, look how pretty hers look. Wow. <laughs> wow. I know. She's a very good color room. <laughs> One of my favorites. Um, so that would be a tip that I would suggest for both of you on uh, kind of actually getting a calendar and writing in those times on making sure we're getting everything done. And that brings us to kind of some of our skill sets. And there are a couple free tools that I will send you after this, after this meeting. And the first one, it's all through the library, Allen County Public Library. So if you don't live in town, let me know and I'll send you the link to, to get there. Um, but the first one is like, okay, what am I really most interested in? If my interests as the business owner are in marketing and sales, um, and my skill set is higher in those areas, then I'm going to need to find someone to help me do the um, back office work. But maybe my skill set actually is not the going out into the public and drumming up um, business. And so with that, we really need to think through that because for quite a while in the business, as you're starting, you are your only salesperson. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for you to get somebody else as excited about your business as you will be. So we need to get you some tools and things to get you out of your comfort zone and out of the back office a little bit so that you can go out and sell. Have, have either of you heard of the, uh, we are the average of the five people that we surround ourselves with. So I'd love for you to take a minute and write down five people or five groups that you're around the most. Some people will say it's, you know, my church group. And so that can be, that can count as like one person. Um, other people may say it's my mom or it's my spouse or, you know, it's these three friends. So just take a minute and write down the five to six people that you surround yourself with most. Antoine, it could be a coworker for you. Yeah. I... Not really around too many people too often travel with work. Um, oh, yeah. But. And so in that sense, it's what are you listening to? Because you're, listening you're traveling to. a lot, it could be the radio. It could be you're listening to books on tape. It could be 
um, you know, podcasts or it's whatever is who you're spending the most time with. Okay, next to their names, I want you to write some attributes. So maybe they're motivational, or maybe they're funny, or maybe they are um, kind of angry. Uh, just write down some attributes about them. Now look to see if some of those attributes overlap between people. I'm going to give you an example. If I were to write down my spouse, and because my 10-year-old daughter is a heck of a lot needier than my 13-year-old son, I have her name down. <laughs> he just really want to hang out with me. Right now. <laughs> um, I kind of see my parents a decent amount, and I have a coworker and a friend that I'm probably around a lot. So as I wrote down their attributes, I'm like, okay, each one of them is really funny. And they're all kind of unapologetically themselves. Like they do not care. They're not changing for anybody. Um, I did start to see that they can all be kind of negative. They do it in a really funny way. And I must love the sarcasm, judgmental type of personality. <laughs> so weird. This means that when I start a business, I can't rely on my people. I can't go to, to my top five people and say, all right, I'm starting another business because I've done this <laughs> twice now. Because each one of them is going to be brutally honest coming from their standpoint, from their lives. And if my husband's a teacher, teachers don't like change. Um, this Elizabeth, she's been in the same job. I met her at our first job together. She's been in the same job for 14 years. She's not going to be okay with starting a business. Um, your parents are most likely going to be worried for you. So they're going to tell you that it's a bad idea. So whomever you have down, I just want to make sure that knowing that, that whatever it is that's surrounding you, these, they could be really uplifting people. You wanna keep all five of those people. If they are not gonna be people that can motivate you when you are, are stuck or can see bigger picture, then we gotta get you in contact and you have to be really intentional about getting yourself around people who are motivational, who are gonna um, help you think bigger and excite you when, when everything's really hard. So now we've looked at our, our day. We've looked at who we're spending time with. Now we have to think about who we're going to market to. How do we get more customers than what we already have? Some of that is going to come from if, if they have a need or a want for our product or service. And you can do either. You know, people don't need the same boho t-shirt that you just got down the road on 
you know, whatever street. There might be the same uh, boutique on the same street. They all have different names, but they're essentially saying the same thing. That's okay as long as you know how to draw those people in. So that's a want. Um, but a need, we know exactly how to talk to those people. We know exactly how to scratch their itch. Then we're gonna find out how many people there are out there that want our, what we have. And we really have to find out what our competitors are doing. So I can't tell you how often I actually hear people say, well, I don't really have a competitor. You do. There, somebody, your people are spending their money somewhere else. So my first business I had was image consulting. So I grew up in the fashion world in corporate America. And I was like, I'm done with this. So I don't know what else to do. I'm going to be a consultant. Well, I could personal shop for people. So who's my competitor? In town, there wasn't another personal shopper when I started. So I could have easily said, I don't have any competition. But really that's a total lie because my competition just isn't getting paid. So it's harder for me to get somebody to pay me because they're going with their mom or their best friend or their daughter or whomever, their wife. So I have to compete against somebody who doesn't charge. And then I had to look at the boutiques. Okay, what boutiques? So if somebody's going into Goodwill, there's not going to be someone there to help them shop. So that may be a really good place for me to go. You might pay me to help you buy a whole new wardrobe. Whereas if they're going into a fancier boutique, they're going to pay for the expertise of the person working there. So this is where you're trying to figure out exactly where your market is. And again, you can go after a need or a want. So somebody didn't need me to go shopping with them, um, but they wanted to feel good about themselves. And I can help with that. So somebody might not need a new baby or another kid, but they might just want one. Um, they might want to throw a party or they might need some construction done at their house because maybe there's a leak or maybe they don't need construction, but they want to upgrade their kitchen or something. So just knowing how to talk to someone is going to be really important in your marketing. So we're going to find out where they're hanging out. We're going to find out how many of them there are, and we're going to look to see who our competitors are. This document that I'm putting up on the screen is nothing other than just how my brain works. So I'm gonna send you uh, this if you want to use it, but you definitely don't have to. But how I use it is, let's see, if it's a photography studio, I'm gonna write down um, maybe some rental spaces in town. So maybe I do write down punch films. Now they're not my total, competitor, but a photographer may spend money with them to utilize their space. So I'm going to write down punch films over here. Maybe I write down, um, uh, trying to think. maybe they're going to rent out the embassy. So I'm going to write down what they have. So thinking about where photographers are spending their money, and I want to list each one of those companies here. Ah. And then I want to, you know, say, okay, so punch films, you can hire it by the day. You can um, rent monthly. Um, you know, I'm just going to write down everything that they offer. And then down here, I'm going to write down punch films again. And under the service, I'm going to say what they charge for it. And if it's the embassy or Indian hotel or wherever, I'm gonna write those businesses down under here and say what the prices of what they charge. So that when I include myself in here, I can see where I, where I should be. 
it also gives us permission to say, you know what? I'm way better than punch films. They have one space. I have all these little vignettes they can use. So I can charge more than what punch film is making. Like all of a sudden it kind of gives you permission. So Antoine, for you, if it's transportation, um, if you look at hot shot, hot shot trucking um, compared to other logistics companies, I might look at even U-Haul. What would they do if they were going to do it by themselves? If it's, you know, an organization, if it's the CDL and, and they're, uh, you know, a more a client that doesn't want to do it themselves, um, I'm going to start adding those in here. And I'm going to say, okay, you know, do you know who some of your competitors are, Antoine? Um, there are a... Uh, there are a couple of um, guys in the area that have sprinter bands um, uh, and there um, are a couple of guys that have trucking companies, but they're much larger than I am um, and been around much longer. Um, I have a few that I have written down in my business plan um, that, yeah, most of them been around much longer than I have. And, much less. Yeah, and, and that's okay, because that's where your customer, that may be their only option right now. They don't have any option that really fits their needs, so they have to spend their money there or do it themselves. So we want to write down their names and how much they're charging, um, and then that, again, kind of gives you permission. Okay, I don't have to be the cheapest, because they're spending this with them, but I'm going to offer them exactly what they need. So that's, that's this competitive analysis that will really help when you get into this financial area. Do both of you have an idea of how much you need to make in the business? Yes. Um... Yes, but I, I'm just I'm in I'm just in a tight spot because I don't want to be where I'm at, and I I now have that option to walk away from it. So because I I'm paying a seven hundred dollar electric bill. That's only <laughs> seven. Yeah. Ooh. So like, I know what I. I, I have sort of an idea what I need to make now, but that's not what I want to make because I don't, I don't want to pay a $700 electric bill. Yeah. I don't like the, I don't want to pay a hundred plus dollars for trash each month when I'm not using the dumpster because my business doesn't require, like I, I have all these expenses that I'm paying for that are just out of this world. So it's mm -hmm. like, my I would like to redo my numbers I would like to get out switch it off I'm just like I said I'm in kind of an odd spot mm -hmm. actually it's a great spot because now you know what you don't want yeah you know it always looks really exciting to especially with malls like I have a lot of our clients who are selling products and they think I want to be in Glenbrook um so we had one woman who does this amazing lip gloss mm -hmm. And so when we sat down into the financials, she was going to have to sell 2,000 lip glosses a month to cover the cost of that. And if we look, like, is it, mm -hmm. is it feasible to sell 2,000 lip glosses mm -hmm. a month? So, so for you, if we look through and we see how many photographers you need to cover that cost, maybe you can still have that many photographers if there's demand for it, but we could find you a space that's cheaper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then same for you, Antoine, if we're thinking we have to understand how much money you both need to cover your own personal expenses. And so the very first step in this is actually to find out what your how much money you have to pay yourself. 
and then you do the business portion of it. So as an example, as an example for, if this is kind of this little cheat sheet that I use for myself. Um, if we didn't look at this for the business, if we looked at this for your personal expenses, you might write down your rent or your mortgage. And then you might say, okay, I have a car loan and maybe you have a school loan or, you know, some other loan that maybe, maybe it's Antoine taking out the loan for the business. Um, that will end up shifting to the business cost. But at first it might be coming out of your pocket. Um, you might have your own insurance. You know, you gotta pay internet and you have your telephone. And, and so as you write down all of these costs, you'll start to see, okay, for me personally, I need to bring in at least $2,000 a month that I can cover my own personal bills. The business has to pay me this to cover my personal bills. Then we do this for the business so that, you know, here on this line right here, can you see my cursor? Okay, so this line right here where it says your desired monthly salary you don't want to just cover your bills. You want to have extra. So um, maybe we say instead of 2000, you're just going to have 2,500 is what you want to bring home. And then we have the expenses for the business. So, you know, if Rachel's lease is 1500 a month, then we need to put that in there. Um, Antoine, if, if your truck and trailer, if you're still paying on that, then we need to have that fee in here. Um, we have a loan payment. You're going to have to have insurance, probably more Antoine. You might have more an insurance than what Rachel's going to have. Um, and so we're just going to start listing this out. What else is in the business that we need to pay for? So say this is both of your, you know, your expenses. So say you both have 16,000 that you need to cover and that includes your salary and potentially an, a, a, you know, an employee. Now, how do we cover that 16,000? We cover that by saying, okay, I'm gonna have a space where you could rent it by the hour you could, you know, not only rent the space by an hour, you could rent um, props, additional props. You could do a half day or a full day. So you're gonna start writing down the ways that people can pay you. So for Antoine, maybe this is, um, how do you see yourself doing this right now? I think um, the type of loads, um, hauling, um, I could either haul vehicles or um, different types of freight. There's a load board where you go and bid on loads and they kind of pay you by the, by the mile. And so, um, or you can people leaving Fort Wayne traveling to Texas and can't drive their vehicles, then they can hire you to um, transport their vehicles to Texas. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, negotiate a, a price on that or um, local construction companies that need to get <clears throat> equipment supplies from one place to the next or you know, um, mm -hmm. you can negotiate a price or I have a negotiate a price with them on that, um, how much you'll charge to deliver whatever supplies or equipment, you know, to whatever location for a specified price. Yeah, exactly. So yours might say, you know, one of your line items will just be load. 
and it, your loads will maybe depend on distance or maybe it's if they're non-CDL or CDL. So that may be how you break yours down. And each one of those has this retail cost over here. So somebody's gonna pay you how much to do this non-CDL load. And somebody's gonna pay you how much to do this, um, you know, uh, a vehicle transport. And then this is where we get into the sales. This is this like our, our, our little tool here then becomes a sales tool. Because we can say, okay, in order for me to cover this $16,000, I need to sell, you know, if one load is $3,000, I need to sell five of these major loads and I need to sell two of these vehicle transports, and I need to sell one of the non-CDL transports. And so now you have something super tangible to go, okay, back to my marketing. Who do I contact so I can get more of these loads? Or back to my marketing, who's gonna need a half day in my photography studio. So it's kind of this, this whole nice tool that works for so many things. And before we actually can determine what these costs are, we have to figure out what each item is costing us to sell. So if it's Rachel, if you have, you know, say it's your $1,500 rent a month and you have to pay utilities, you can break that down by the hour. So if, if somebody wants to rent with you for one hour, um, you know that lights, if, if your utility bills are $700 for the month, you can break that down by how, how much it is by hour to have the lights on. Mm -hmm. you know, take the days divided by hours, and then that'll give you how, many, how much per hour for that utility. Is. Yes. So then you know exactly what it's costing you. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why I never thought about that. It's totally, it's like things, until we start talking about it with somebody, we don't do it because we mm -hmm. have so many other things to do. Yeah. So it just it totally happens. That's why we have coaches. Um, very just common sense and it's like I've just been here like okay well I don't understand how to price this stuff because yeah. it's not mm -hmm. I'm not giving them an actual tangible wow. item yeah or so it's like so how do you yeah accordingly time services time yep and you figure out how much you want to make Mm -hmm. So if you were to say, I want to make, you know, if I want to bring home $2,000 a month, um, then I know based off of, if I, you know, you start to break that, how many hours you want to work in front of the client. And so all of a sudden you look and you say, okay, here's my utilities. Here's, um, here's what it costs me to buy into these props. And and now it's my time to sit there because they're there. So that's going to be a line item. So I want to get paid at least $25 an hour. So, so then you start adding all of that up. And that's when you get to go back to the competitor's price and you say, okay, so I could retail this at $200 for an hour. They're going to pay me $200 an hour. And I know it's only gonna cost me $100 an hour. So now I have made it, it's worth my time to do this business. And for Antoine, it may be the number of miles that you're going, gas prices, kind of if we can figure out the wear and tear of the truck <laughs> per load. If we start breaking that down, then we know how much to charge. And 
And some of that, you know, again, is market value because if, if one of the brokers is only going to pay you $2,500 and you may not be covering the cost that you need to because of the truck, then you can say, you know what, that $2,500 looks really good on paper, but in the long run, I'm not going to make enough to cover the, the wear and tear on my truck. So I'm not going to take that load. I'm going to take this other load where I'm going to get paid more and travel a shorter distance. That kind of thing. So I know that this is so much to talk about in one hour. So please know if you are overwhelmed, it's a good thing to see it through in like realistic terms. And we will work with you to get all of this um, in order. So don't think like, hey, here, freak out. Here's all this information. And then you're on your own. We're going to have you try it out, but then we'll work with you to get it to where it, you know, it's digestible. You're like, okay, yeah, this, I get, I, I'm, I'm in a good spot now. So remember back here, we said we could use this as a sales tool, really. <laughs> So we move into the sales portion now. Now we know how many items or services we need to sell to cover our costs. But you think, what exactly is sales? So you guys tell me in your business, what are some ways that you're selling? I am providing, I sell by um, encouraging photographers not to pay the overhead that I'm paying, not mm -hmm. to waste their time creating sets that I've already created for them. Mm -hmm. not to, um, I basically sell convenience. Awesome. Yes, totally. Yes. So good. So good. That, that's what I sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Antoine, you kind of do too, really. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. I am um, um, being able to transport people's um, property equipment. Um, supplies um, where they don't have to or um, <clears throat> uh, um, absolutely or if there's a driver shortage or you know we always need more drivers always yeah yeah there, there's yeah um, yeah the, the, pretty much the, the kind of the same thing um, selling that convenience for them either because some companies it's hard there is a shortage of drivers. It's hard for some companies to keep drivers um, <clears throat> uh, because of the relationships that the shippers and carriers have with um, some of the drivers and seem like they just don't care. Um, or um, again, um, not being able to afford Having your having drivers or trucks of your own, and having to, you know, contract that that out. So being able to um, sell my services to do what it is they can't do or don't want to do for themselves. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then, so you're selling kind of directly to your customer. We also, in a way, we can sell to our customer after they've already purchased us from us too. We can say, okay, you know what? You know, you come in and you've used the space. Why don't you actually get a package? And, you know, it looks like you've been in here this many times. So you're upselling them. Mm -hmm. How about you just go ahead and you get a subscription or this package. You can come in so many times per month. That way you get, or it looks like you're not just using my stuff. It looks like you're carting some things in and out. 
why don't you just pay to store some of your stuff here? We'll keep it locked up in this closet over here. So you're upselling them. Um, Antoine, for you, it's going to be a little different because it's more based off that load and what's ever on the, that, that document uh, or the board. Yeah. So this is, so Kiva was talking about referral and that's the other way we sell. We have to sell ourselves to people who will refer people to us. Mm -hmm. Those are the same set of flock together. Yeah. So for Hill Image, when I was doing that personal shopping stuff, it was really easy for me to go to a photographer and say, hey, mm -hmm. I just got them looking all jazzy. They're feeling so confident about themselves. You should take their picture. Mm -hmm. So I actually went to a photographer and said, I want to be a referral for you. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. These people are so happy. I want them to hold on to this feeling. Mm -hmm. um, I also went to like a skincare person. And they said, you know, most of my ladies are age 60 or up, and they're all concerned about having this body. They don't know whose body it is. Um, why don't you do something for them where it's, you know, they're, they're all looking at skincare. They're all doing this stuff. Why don't I have you in this little packet that I can refer people to you? So you kind of create this little network and they're referring people to me and I'm referring people to mm -hmm. them. And it's all, it all makes sense of who needs that. So um, uh, Antoine, if it is, you know, non-CDL stuff, stuff that you're not gonna get on that, that board, then you want people to say, hey, you know what? There are these other shredder bin guys, uh, but they're all busy. So maybe they can't get to somebody and this customer is mad. You want that shredder bin guy to send them to you. He knows you're not going to like steal them for lifelong. That's not the goal, but this is so that everybody gets served. Um, and maybe for you, if you don't have the shredder bin, but this customer wants it, then you can say, Hey, I have the, the perfect, perfect company for you. I really think that these two companies are big. So you're selling yourself in that sense. This is a fun little tool. It's totally free. It's like six questions and you answer them and it'll tell you how comfortable you're going to be at sales. So I'll send this to you in the email, but it's really pretty fun to just take it. All of a sudden you're like, oh gosh, I'm not going to be good at sales. <laughs> and in that sense, we just know we need to work on that with you. So today, we did those four things we said we were going to do. We kind of reflected on our day, on who's surrounding us. We know that we need to go find the people that are going to help us make this happen. We talked about our marketing and where people are and how to, you know, a little bit about how we get in front of them. There is an organization that's just like us. They're sponsored by the SBA too, so they're free. It's called the Small Business Development Association or Small Business Development Center. I'll send you the link. But you can go to them and they'll pull all these beautiful reports for you for free. And it'll say, you know, in this area of town or whatever, wherever it is all over the country, in this zip code, people are spending their money on this. So you both can see how your businesses can fit into that, how you market to that particular zip code. Um, you can see customer information. Um, you know, it's gonna give you a ton of information. So I'll send that link to you so you can go to them and get this info. Uh, then we talked about the financial foundation. So first we have to know what our personal finances are. And then we have to know how that all rolls into the business finance. And then we moved into sales from there. How many sales do we need to achieve to make this business profitable? Next steps, now that we've gone through this assess discussion is going a little bit more into that discovery. So even if you already have a business, if you're not 
if you're not consistently making $2,000 a month or covering your expenses, then we know we need to do more of this discovery. And part of that is gonna be some of these reports from the ISBDC. Some of it might be, there's some really good like videos you can watch um, on, on the SCORE website, if you've ever heard of SCORE. I love them, I watch them all the time actually. Um, and, and then we also, we're gonna start talking to potential clients. So Rachel's going to go out there and start talking to photographers, you know, what, what would they be doing if they didn't have your space available? Antoine, um, calling customers of the people that your competitors are serving. So, you know, I'm thinking about hiring this, you just, you, you just pretend that you want to hire them. So like, I'm thinking about hiring them. Um, tell me, would you hire them again? And they will be more than happy to even give you uh, this initial response is either gonna be really good or really bad. And that's all you need to know. What are they really bad at or what are they really good at? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna do some like super sleuthing to find out some of this stuff. So I will write you an email recapping some of the stuff we talked about today. I want you to go do some of this research and then I wanna get back together with you. And it'll either be me or it'll be Kiva. And we're going to talk through what you've found, these responses you've gotten from Super Sleuthing. Um, and we're going to work on a deeper dive into your actual budgets. Okay. Okay. Well, it was wonderful to meet you both. It was very nice. You as well. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice meeting you all too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'll send you that email and then you guys get back on our calendars. So I'll, I'll put all that information in the email. Okay. All okay. right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a great night. You, you too. too.